Hello and welcome to News Click. Uh, today I have uh, Professor Surendra Negi with uh, me to speak on Venezuela. Uh, Professor Negi, the recent constant assembly election in Venezuela which happened on 30th July 2017 paves way for a kind of political stability in Venezuela. How do you evaluate this? There are two ways to look at it. One is from the point of view of Venezuelan government, from the people of the uh, people of Venezuela, and the other one is how the uh, corporate media, uh, directly financed by the U.S. and its allies, how they look, how they look at it. So, in the recent past, we've seen the the most important contribution of the National uh, Constituent Assembly election is that it ended the violent protests that Venezuela witnessed in the last three, four months from March to July. So after the elections, the most important contribution is that that violence uh, wave, long wave, it ended. Uh, there is a direct intervention from the US and the pressure is being seen uh, all over Venezuela and outside also. But what I do see is that in the elections, uh, where almost 40 percent of the uh, uh, voters came out despite the threat, the clear threat to their lives. They came out and they, they, they did participate in that election process. What does that mean? That clearly means that how much ever the U.S. with, uh, in collaboration with the opposition uh, parties of Venezuela, how much ever they are trying to destabilize the, uh, the economy, the politics uh, in Venezuela, the people are not really in favor of that. And the elections on 30th July are a proof of that, that they will not accept an intervention, whether economic or military, in their country. The major challenge in front of the Venezuelan government now is the economic stability. We have seen that Venezuela has a very strong social sector. Where are the things going now? So, Chavez uh, came into power in 1999. Uh, in a couple of years, he managed to overcome the challenges that he was facing at that particular point of time within the country and from outside also. And we, are, we all remember how the coup took place in 2002. But uh, in spite of all those uh, uh, forces working against his regime, uh, Chavez began with a long wave of social reforms, which even after his demise, the current government under uh, Nicolas, Raji, uh, Nicolas Maduro's regime, they still continue. And I can share with you uh, a small figure like in, in the housing sector, uh, what they have achieved. So I can share with you that by 2019, they are targeting approximately 30 lakh houses for people who come from the marginalized sections of Venezuela. What does it actually mean? It means providing dignity, providing access to a dignified life to a lot of people. And who are these people? These are the people who live or who have lived all their lives in the slums, which in Venezuela are called barrios. They've lived all their life there. And it is for the first time that under Chavez's regime and under Maduro's regime, they come and start living in these uh, beautiful flats which the government has provided them at an uh, incredibly low EMI, which is absolutely unimaginable for, for, for us. They don't even have to pay the down payment there. They don't pay anything as a lump sum amount at the beginning. Depending upon the total income of a family, the government decides how much money they will pay for that particular flat, which can be a 1 BHK, 2 BHK, 3 BHK, depending upon the size of the family. So the government charges them 30% of the cost that the government incurs on that flat. It's a, it's a huge achievement. I must congratulate uh, Venezuelan government for doing this. Now, even of that 30% of the investment that the government puts in on these flats, uh, the, the interest rate that applies there, it varies from 4% to 10%, again depending upon the total income of that family. 
So, this has really, really helped the marginalized sections of Venezuelan population to have a dignified life where they have electricity, they have access to uh, drinking water and the government is not even, not just providing them with a flat as such, they are also giving them some basic infrastructure like basic furniture, like a refrigerator, a washing machine, you know some basic things that people have never ever had in their life. Now that's on the housing sector. Uh, in the education sector, Chavez came into power in 1999 and by 2005-2006, Venezuela almost touched a 100% literacy rate. That's, that's incredible. You don't see it happening anywhere else. This whole talk of, you know, uh, Venezuela living under dictatorship and Chavez was a dictator, now Maduro is also a dictator. I wonder uh, whether we really want to live in a democracy where people do not have access to water, where people do not have access to a dignified life, housing, education, social security. If the democracy cannot provide you that, the system which is providing people these bas basic commodities, whether you call it dictatorship or democracy, it doesn't really matter. For people, what is important is to have access to these basic things in their life. And I think that's very important. It's crucial for them to understand what they have gained in the last 18, 19 years after this whole process of Bolivarianism or Bolivarian revolution or Chavismo has started in 1999. Talking about di dictatorships, uh, let's go to United States where we have a democratically elected dictator. Donald Trump, who is uh, moving around, uh, threatening everyone, if everyone considered as enemy, with military action. And the same we have seen, uh, he has uh, targeted Venezuela, saying that he, uh, he will use military as an option against Venezuela. So do you think that under Donald Trump regime, US is again trying to extend its influence in Latin America to change, uh, to implement its whole neoliberal agenda? So I would start with Cuba, 1959. Cuba, uh, Fidel Castro comes to power. In a couple of years, he declares it a socialist state. And then the whole problem starts. And we have seen how the economic blockade has existed over the last 60 long years. And the US under Obama's regime, it did, to a certain extent, it did admit that their foreign policy towards Cuba has failed. Uh, it didn't open it in clear terms, but they did admit to a certain extent that they failed there on that front. Now, what happens in case of Venezuela is quite, quite different. Cuba is not a rich country uh, compared to Venezuela. Bolivia is not that way so rich as a country uh, in comparison with Venezuela. Now, all these countries which have shifted to the left, uh, when you look at Venezuela, which has today the largest known uh, sources of oil on this planet, you do understand why US has shown so much of interest in the internal affairs of Venezuela. So even if the US today, uh, you know, intervenes militarily in countries like Bolivia or Cuba or any other small country in Latin America, it doesn't necessarily translate into a huge profit in economic terms. Whereas in Venezuelan case, if they destabilize the government of Maduro and bring the national oligarchy back to power, it essentially means gaining access to those large resources which are the national oil, which Chavez nationalized completely in the year 2002 or 2003. When he, we, when he actually nationalized it and the uh, corporate world of the US and the other European countries, they started losing their profits there because Chavez, from 1% of taxes on the Venezuelan oil, Chavez took it to 33%. Now, this huge shift from 1% to 33% on oil, it Ultimately, where did that money go? That all that money went into the social sectors. So uh, naturally, this doesn't suit the big corporations 
of the US and the other advanced economies of the world. So uh, I would say that the military intervention that the Donald Trump administration has, of course, uh, publicly announced is most probably going to be a reality in the coming days, especially in the context of the elections which are expected on the 15th of October this coming Sunday. I have this understanding that whether the current government of socialists, the PSUV party, uh, whether they win or lose in these assembly elections, the corporate media has already made its story. If Maduro's party wins, the story will be that the democracy has completely collapsed and that's why they have come to power again. If Maduro's party loses elections, the story will be that this is a slap on Maduro's dictatorship. So I think uh, the story is very, very clear and it's already ready. It's, we, we are just waiting for some days and after the elections, results are, uh, are, are announced. The story will again uh, run all over the world through these big corporate houses. Thank you, Professor Surendra, for talking to Newsnet.